Hi there. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we actually go about testing for significance of multiple coefficients. So the null hypothesis here is that we sort of have, in this context, beta 1 is equal to beta 2, which are both equal to 0. So we're testing whether jointly, and in this above regression, g and d are not significant in determining our dependent variable. So just to provide a little bit of context, the, very, the sort of regressions which I'm talking about here is we're trying to explain interest rates. So this could be sort of interest rates on um, government debt. And we're saying, do they depend on government spending? And also, does it depend on the debt, the level of debt which a country has? So the idea with government spending is that does government, public spending lead to a crowding out of a private investment? So you might expect under sort of traditional theory that beta one would be greater than zero. And the idea is that if the sort of level of debt for a country goes up, then the sort of interest which a country has to pay on that debt, you would expect to be higher as well. So in this sort of context, you would expect from well, perhaps sort of traditional economically, you'd expect beta one and beta two to be greater than zero. So the idea is that we run this original top regression and we have got some sort of value for the sum of square residuals. And it's equal to 2,000. Well, 2,000 what? Well, actually it's going to be 2,000 sort of, the units are going to be 2,000% squared because our dependent variable is percent. So when I square that and add it up or add, add up errors, then that's going to be 2,000% squared. And similarly for the second regression, in the second regression, I have actually constrained my regression specification um, by letting sort of beta 1 and beta 2 have got to be equal to 0. So the sort of regression, the, the second regression which we've got here is really the sort of what we'd expect our model to be under the null hypothesis being true. And which of these is the restrictive regression? Well, it's the second regression because of the fact that we're placing this restriction on our coefficients. We're saying that both government spending and debt are not important in determining the interest rate. So we're restricting our model. So the first sort of sum of square residuals is that which we got for our unrestricted model. OK, so how do we go about testing jointly whether these coefficients are equal to zero or jointly whether they're insignificant? The idea is that we form an F statistic. And how do we do that? Well, we use our formula, which is the sum of square residuals for the restricted model minus the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model. And then we divide that through by the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model. Yeah, so that's how we start off forming our F statistic. And um, because the idea is that we're sort of in our numerator, we're testing what's the sort of improvement in predictor sort of prediction of our model from inclusion of these extra variables. But then we need to sort of standardize this. So what we do is we divide the numerator through by the number of restrictions. Well, how many restrictions do we have in this case? Well, we're, we're sort of restricting two coefficients to be equal to zero. So we have two restrictions. So we divide the top by two. And the um, bottom, we need to divide through by the number of observations which we have. Well, the number of observations, which I sort of said here, is 200 minus um, the um, number of restrictions. So that's two and, or, and then minus one. Um, and this sort of minus one here is actually sort of um, for the constraint which is placed on having a constant in your model. OK, and we know that under the null hypothesis, then uh, being true, then this sort of value should follow some sort of sampling distribution, which is given by an F statistic. So, and remember we talked about the F statistic as having sort of two things, which it depends on two degrees of freedom. Uh, in this case, it's gonna have it's sort of first degree of freedom is gonna be given by two, and the second degree of freedom is gonna be given by 197. So the idea here is that we would, in order to see if we, were having any sort of significant variables in our model, we would have to go and look up in a T distribution table. So the idea here is that we have sort of degrees of freedom one, sort of one, two, yeah, sort of tabulated like that. And then degrees of freedom two tabulated, sort of one all the way through. 
and we have sort of multiple F tables corresponding to different p-values. So we'd need to look up the table which had a p-value of 0 0.05. And the idea here is that we look up the value which is sort of from our numerator degrees of freedom first in terms of rows, so we'd go across from the t-value, and then we would have to find 197 in terms of the second degree of freedom. Normally, F tables won't be distributed or won't be um, tabulated that far, so it'll probably sort of just say um, perhaps up to n equals 100, the second degree of freedom is equal to 100, uh, and then sort of under that situation, perhaps you can make an assumption that that's um, sort of far enough. So the idea is that you would look up that sort of particular F value there. Um, and that, and that sort of gives you your critical value for f. And the idea is that if we were to sort of calculate this f value, um, well, the sort of top here is going to be equal to what's going to be equal to 1,000. And the bottom is going to be equal to roughly 10. So we're going to get a, a sort of f statistic here, which is roughly 100. And the idea is that we would have to compare that f value with the sort of critical value which we look up in our f table and if it was greater than that critical value then we would reject the null hypothesis uh, and typically for the f statistic uh, it sort of has a um, critical value which is around sort of three four five um, but obviously you need to look it up when you especially when you're first starting out but if you get an f value which is sort of a hundred as we have here then we're almost certainly going to reject the null hypothesis. And, and we could have seen that really, right? I mean, we by adding our extra variables to the model, we actually sort of improved its um, predictability by a factor of two. So, and because we've got sort of sufficient observations, we should expect that that is indicative of the fact that we have some sort of degree of significance in our sort of additional independent variables which we've included. 